Hi, Janelle here with Sheep Hill Herbs. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. I hope you're having a, a great day as I am. It is a warm, warm early spring day and uh, I wanted to give an introduction to the video that I'm going to be sharing. So if you haven't uh, figured this out yet or don't know what I'm doing, I started offering a weekly herb class in my community and it is on a Thursday night so if you're local to Bethel you can um, attend it and I'm trying to ha always have it videotaped or filmed with my camera videotape is an uh, <laughs> antiquated word filmed and then I'm posting it by the weekend on here and the reason being, well, of course, I want to share the information with everybody, but it is part of my home herbalist, advanced home herbalist course that I'm offering. So this is something new, and it's beginning in April, April 1st. I have people registered already. It's the uh, end of March here, middle to end of March, and they will be beginning will be beginning in April. It is 10 months in length. So I have set it up where it's ongoing enrollment. If you do not start April 1st, it's not like you miss this window and you have to wait 10 months. You can sign up after and enroll whenever you want. But the way I have it set up is you are purchasing uh, by subscription. So it's like a monthly fee. And every month you either get your information mailed to you or emailed based upon which version you choose. And so it kind of like unfolds for 10 months. And whenever you start, you have 10 months there to finish. So one of my requirements for the course um, to receive the certificate at the end is to attend two of my classes. And I say in person, if possible, and I have other places that I'll be besides the one that's right here in my local area. But um, if you cannot attend, then I'm offering the class here on YouTube. And I'll try to have, make sure I say class in the title. It will be a long video, like an hour, or split into two parts. So sometimes I have one part, 25 minutes, second part, 25 minutes. And then you send me an email with your summary of the video, i.e. the class, as part of your assignment. If you attend the class in person, you're not doing a summary because I know you were there, I know you heard the information. And uh, so what follows is one of my classes that I had this week. It was a, it was kind of like a discussion class about herb safety. So this topic is like so big, so large, uh, and I cannot cover it in one hour. So I want to say that first and foremost, it's sort of like a philosophy behind herb safety. And I really would like to do more videos on this topic because it's um, it is a really interesting topic and I am passionate about sharing this and my viewpoint might be a, a lot different than what you would find on the internet um, in the mainstream kind of searching because when we put stuff on the internet, even in my videos, I am very careful with what um, or I, I'm, I feel cautioned with what I say. So what I always recommend is getting books and starting your own library and buying older books. Um, I'm going to make a video here soon that I share books that I find to be really good, uh, helpful, uh, not free, I mean not free, not fear-based, Fear they're not fear-based herbal books. So this is a discussion. I have some clips of some people from the class sharing, but um, I'm doing some editing. I want to give a warning here. This information is for educational purposes only. I'm not a doctor. No one in the class is a doctor. We're not physicians. I'm an herbalist. This is education. This is discussion. This is free speech. And um, I... I'm not responsible for some of the opinions of others share that share in this video, 
but I am sharing this information with you and hopefully we can have um, a healthy uh, discourse on this. So I'm going to sign off here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell button, check the description. For today down. is going to be herb safety or taking herbs safely. I wasn't exactly sure how to phrase it. Uh, it's a charged topic and probably not one I can explain well in just a cl in one class. Uh, but I'm going to try to do the best I can as far as like an introduction to herb safety. And I know, Melinda, you probably have a lot of information in this area, um, at least pass down information. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess maybe what I'll do right now, just before I talk, is just I'd like to ask both of you to share your feelings about herbs and their, them being safe because mostly we have a conditioned approach or feeling about plants and that really determines our faith or our fear about herbal medicine. So if you want to summarize or just tell me when you hear the word herb safety or, or thinking about herbs being safe, what goes through your mind? What are your feelings about that topic? Um, or do you get worried? Or I don't want to give you too many, um, too many words put in your mouth, but maybe I'll just stop there. What it, what it, what comes from? Right to, you know, experiment and um, see how see, see how they work, but also understanding that their herbs are a food. You know, it's not. Like, mm -hmm. um, like with the, um, the medical world, the, the, they take a chemical constituent out of the herb and they say, oh yeah, now it's not healthy for you anymore, like they did the comfrey. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's not how herbs work. We take herbs in their whole form. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, they, they are a food. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there is you know amount of caution to use, but not, you know, you who were made them for our bodies to to heal themselves mm -hmm. and to nourish and to feed, you know, and for food. And um, I think that's, you know, lost in today and, um, you know, just because we, we're not taught, you know, mm -hmm. we're not taught anymore about the herbs of the field and how they are made to nourish and feed, feed us and that they are food. So. So, um, I guess I'll first start by sharing this, and Melinda knows this teacher well, <laughs> and I have shared this book on many of my videos, Dr. Christopher, The School of Natural Healing. I did see that last night. Yes. And um, I say, get this book now. It is a collector item. It's expensive. It is over, I'm pretty sure it's over $100 right now on Amazon. And I had an older version and I don't, I, I cannot locate it and that one would be even more valuable. But um, I'm gonna have to make sure I hit all these points. So Dr. Christopher, he was who I heard and learned that your herbs are your food. It is, your food is your medicine, your medicine is your food. And right away people, they always bring up, well, what about, you know, poison hemlock or um, some, <laughs> some herb that's uh, not food. <laughs> so those are herbs, those are really medi strong medicinal plants that have a purpose and a place that um, should be given by an herbalist. But for the most part, we have known for thousands of years which herbs are food. And they're the ones that we put in our gardens, um, the the culinary herbs, the basil and the thyme and the marjoram and um, all of the bitter greens. They're the ones that grow close to your house 
in your gardens, uh, dandelion, plantain, um, mm -hmm. lamb's quarters. So if you're confused, if you, if you want to know if something is food, you know, looking up in any kind of plant book, even searching online, finding out, is this a plant food? You will find that answer because sticking with the herbs that have been known foods is the safest place to begin. You know, you're not going to um, begin your herbal journey by trying to figure out how to use, um, you know, poke root or some other kind of deep forest plant. Now I'm going to say golden seal root, but that is, that's a more rare plant and uh, it's not a food plant. It's a plant for specific medicinal herbal healing purposes. But if you want to begin, you have to think your herbs are your food and which, are, which herbs are the ones we're planting and cultivating and growing near our house, uh, the nettles and chickweed. These are our foods, these are our herbs, and they are the most safe plants. So then coming back around to what, so I held this book up and I will have a link to Amazon in my description. Now it won't be to, to this exact book because Amazon no longer lets us link to exact items, but it just links you to Amazon. Um, I think both of you mentioned it, or at least Billy Dawn did, books. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you wanna learn about herb safety, I recommend books. And getting books that are dated Probably, I don't want to say books in the, recent books are not good, but I have found the older the book, the more valuable the information, because most of the older herb books have um, information that has been passed down by plant healers and herbalists and people who have traditionally worked with plant medicines for hundreds or thousands of years and they're taking this information sharing it and sharing it and sharing it so I like the older books and I'll share some more of them here but not that I never found any good information on the internet searching <laughs> I at the moment I can't even think of my favorite there's like Dr. Wellen, maybe Whelan, W H E L A N. Yes. I think he has a very. I'll, I'll have to double check that, and I'll put that in the description. But pretty sure, really good plant identification information. And of course, I'm sharing information here on the internet. But I think for the. There is a lot of information on the internet that is scary to people. And if you don't know about plants and herbs, if you don't have a background and haven't, you know, been raised taking them and, and growing them and working with them and eating them, and you just go and search online, I think whatever you search, like the first, you know, websites that pop up will often be um, government related information that will have a lot of warnings like the the WebMDs and stuff like that and there will be a lot of safety safety warnings that um, I'm not saying that they're totally worthless but they're definitely gonna scare you <laughs> from wanting to ever take any herbs mm -hmm. <laughs> so do either of you have this book the no, Dr. Christopher book. But if that's Dr. Nicole, her yeah. last name starts with an A. Apelian. I can see it. Yes, I have that. You have this book. <laughs> I've been wanting to get it. I don't yeah. have it yet, but I grew up at the School of Natural Healing book. Um, yeah, the School of Natural Healing. So before I go on to another book, because 
I, I do talk about the, this book in my videos. Mm -hmm. I normally don't buy mainstream things. Mm -hmm. And that to I me is mainstream. I guess this a little more leery of it. Because it was like all of the internet. I'm like, is it even worth getting? Because it is plastered all over mm -hmm. the internet. I'm like, huh. <laughs> it's Facebook. Yeah. She was mm -hmm. in that show. What was the... I, I know. I just learned. I've had that okay. book for like two years, and I just learned that like last. I week. watched the ones she was in. Um, why can't I think of it? They're like in the it wilderness. Was like survive. Survive. It was Yeah, it was something with survivor or thriver. Or they had to like live in. Mother who could live in the wilderness the longest <laughs> and not like call like save me? And um, like she she has a doctorate in ecology or something. Mm -hmm. And she knows her plants, so she ate a lot of plants, and she caught a lot of fish, and she had a lot of, like, outdoor skills. Um, I like this book. I wanted, I, I was, like, intrigued. But, to be honest, I think the pictures are great. I think it is a good beginner book. Mm -hmm. But what I think is a little putting off, there are a lot of warnings in here. And I think, I don't know if it's because she is more mainstream and if it's because it's more of a, a recent book, but she has warnings pretty much after every herb. So like you read, you read all of this great information about something and then you get to the end and then it's like warning. And so like, to me, it's like a dichotomy. Like how can you trust in a plant and then you read the warning and then you're like, oh my gosh, that might happen. Like you can't, the way I look at healing or medicine, like if you are going to a doctor for something and you have faith, like God is going to use this doctor, God is going to use these pills, God, you know, if you have faith in that, I think that you will see good results. I think if you go and you're like, I don't know, you know, I don't really want to be doing this. I don't really want to take these drugs. I'm not sure. I'm like, I don't like this. You know, if you go in with like this, like mixed feeling, you're going to get mixed feeling results. And same with herbs. If you are like, I trust God made all the plants, the seed bearing plants for our use. And I believe that, and they are our food, they are our medicine. I, every time I've seen someone have that mindset, they get really good results. Mm -hmm. If I work with someone who is like wishy-washy and like, well, I wanted to try, but I read this on the internet, and then I'm like, hmm. Don't take it then. Like if you, mm -hmm. like if you are that afraid of nettle or red raspberry leaf, because something you read on the internet, don't even bother because that will yeah. counteract. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It it really will. It will counteract. And if you see any kind of little thing, you might then panic, and then your body is pumping out these panic chemicals into your system. So. I don't personally feel like, oh, one is bad, one system is bad, one is good. You should only be natural um, because I have family members who really have faith in the medical profession. And I have seen God work miracles in their life. And, you know, but I think you need to choose where, how you're going to believe, you know. So, okay, this book, going back to trying to, let's try to be a little interactive. You were thinking of watering it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's worthwhile. Okay. I use this. I'll put it on my list. <laughs> it's like my quick, I would say a quick go-to kind of book. If I want to get deep information, which, you know, if I'm writing something like a, a an article or I'm helping someone in depthly or if you really want to educate yourself you want this book this is just to me a, a good decent 
book, beginner book. It's a little expensive for a beginner book in my opinion, but um, you know, I think it's worthwhile to buy the herb books now, to buy any kind of healing book now. I'm not saying we would ever, like, yeah, maybe there would be a time where everything is digital. You you need to have a library, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I agree. And if information is censored on the internet, and it is censored in a way, like, I don't, I wouldn't write certain things on a blog post or whatever. So you're definitely getting censored information about plants mm -hmm. on the internet. Yeah. So you want books. Um, this book is about, this is a, a pop, popular famous book by this popular famous yes. herbalist, Susan <laughs> Weed. She's in New York. And this is called Wise Woman Herbal Childbearing Year. I wish I would have had this book when I was pregnant. So I only just recently got this for um, for now that I've had, after having had all my kids. But the Susan Weed, she, as far as, uh, there's like mainstream herbalists who are like, you know, Rosemary Gladstar. Mm -hmm. And there is like the herbalist niche or, you know, culture and they, um, the American Herbalist Guild kind of like uh, accelerates that. There's like certain people that they fit in this, you know, they fit in with that group. And Susan Weed, I, I find really interesting because she's kind of like not, she's like this wild, wild woman, but like the most knowledgeable plant person I've ever heard talk or teach. I mean, she knows every plant. Their sci it's scientific name and like identifying everything and what it does. I think she has a radio show that, or a phone, a phone radio show you can call in and listen to. But anyway, I just grabbed this book and brought it along because as far as getting good information that is not filled with all kinds of scary warnings, I just wanted to recommend Susan Weed. Uh, this is 1986. She definitely has a deep faith and belief in, in plant healing. So wanted to bring that up. Do you guys have a specific book that you love? Plant book? Um, Can you think of one? Or a plant I know, teacher? I, I can't think of the book. I got, actually it was at a veterinary conference and I thought it was, was herbal, like mm -hmm. an herbal PDR for animals and it's by the Elsevier company and I got home and uh, it was for humans. Mm. So I was like, oh, fancy that. So I used that, but I cannot remember the name of the lady's name that, that wrote it. Um, and it's one of those thick ones that like you'd put in your back pocket when you're doing rotations and rounds in a hospital or something. Oh. But um it, that that's really good because it gives you dosages and uh, you know it tells you like well this interacts with this and that interacts with that so it's it kind of like a good little cross cross reference um, I should what what I will do is message you okay. if you can tell me the name of yeah. that book and I'll put it in my description because I want to just list these books here I, I I'd utilize. Like to, I'd um, like to get it. <laughs> David David Crow. Okay. And um, I did start to take one of his courses a couple years ago, and then I had one of those stupid chronic illness flares and never got back to it. But mm -hmm. um, Dennis McKenna, he is uh, um, eco botanist. I think his brother is the deceased Terence McKenna. They did a oh. lot with mushrooms in the okay. South American. Um, right. follow Graham Hancock is not a plant doctor he yeah. is a journalist from England but he he works a lot and does a lot of education about mm -hmm. um, ayahuasca and the okay. healing medicines of like mm -hmm. South America along with nice. um, Jerry I just lost his name they have Rhythmia Life Center okay. or it's in Costa Rica but he's actually from Wilkes-Barre 
Oh, neat. <laughs> and um, trying to think of who else. I think it's Judith Boyce. I got her. She's a doctor out Midwest somewhere, a, a holistic doc, um, a green doc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she, I started reading her book last year. She's very interesting, has a very interesting story. Um, who, else, who else do I cart around a lot? <laughs> well, a lot of these are new names to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Graham Hancock, I've heard yeah, of. Yeah, he's, he's like age so like 70 okay. 70 74 mm -hmm. he's 74 this year so but he does it was like ancient archaeology and stuff oh, and then somehow wonderful. he got into mm -hmm. you know the south america i guess because of the archaeology down yeah. in south america yeah. and then he just started talking to uh like the the shamans and everything mm -hmm. um oh albert viol viol it's v-i-l-l-e-o he is a PhD doctor, but he was working with some South American doctors. I think his books are through Hay House. Um, okay. It's Grow a New Body is one of his books. Oh, but interesting. But he was getting ill, and he went back home to, I think it was like Northern Eng England or mm -hmm. some country near there. And they told him he had like stage four cancer. There was this, that, everything wrong with you. And he was just like, well, that can't be right and he went back to the shamans and they did like what did they do because I take it um like the great like resveratol basically and um turmeric and I forget what else but it was the barks because I remember specifically listening to mm -hmm. a lecture and he's just like why does this taste so bad and I can just imagine somebody being like yeah <laughs> you know and then he went back for his checkup in his his country of origin and they're like you don't have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> the same with Chris Wark and Chris Carr. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Carr is female. Chris Wark is male. And they both healed from, basically, the doctors told them, mm -hmm. make plans. And it's like 15 years later, and they're still trucking wow. with, like, a lot of food mm -hmm. and herb nutrition. So. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check all of those out. Um, Melinda, can you think of any offhand yeah. that you go to one of my favorites is um rachel weaver she's a um okay a mennonite who studied under dr christopher and she's got a lot of different books out what is uh be your, your own, own doctor. doctor she's got okay. one and two and um be your own pediatrician and backyard pharmacy and mm -hmm. those are my my number one go-to books i'm always opening those up and to you know finding out what i can do for my children if they have an ear infection or um, a fever or what and it's they they've always come for, through for me mm. I've always been mm -hmm. able to you know yeah. help and get rid of the the pain or the issue whatever was my little ones were going through um, so yeah I love and it's it's really she breaks it down to where you can actually you know feel confident in you know making stuff because she gets the recipes in with yeah. it so she, and you know using them and no, realizing, hey, you do like them, and they do work, and it's mm -hmm. can get exciting and fun. You know, that is the thing that I found surprising and shocking when I started taking Dr. Christopher's courses, because it was like they were stories. You know, he just told, he told stories of recipes and what he put together and what people um, would use either on their body or, or eating. Mm -hmm and how it turned out and um the stories were memorable and they were so yeah. so interesting that i retained so much of the information because they were stories of trial um and success and the recipe format like if you're reading books um, or if you're listening to other healers you re and if you're an herbalist yourself you're really cooking you're making things in the kitchen like mm -hmm. it's like all this kitchen prep yeah um you're you have a clean area you're cutting you're making things that you can drink or you know teas you're drinking or chopping up garlic or ginger um for your foods so it's like an extension of cooking it really it's so intertwined um and I don't think people see that. I think 
that safety concern, in my opinion, is when you are trying to replicate drugs. So you brought that up where so yeah. many of the trials, scientific trials done on herbs are isolating mm -hmm. a compound, a chemical compound, and each herb has hundreds, if not thousands of chemical compounds, chemical constituents, and then mag you know synthesizing mag <laughs> magnifying it and then usually injecting it into a lab animal yeah, to exactly. see how they, much they're injecting it which is totally different than herbal you know herbal's yeah. always you're eating it and, and it's like the worst thing that could happen is you vomit okay based for the most part but yeah. when you start putting stuff in your <laughs> into the body that's a totally different story well, it is a drug you know, herbs then. aren't yeah it's exactly not... it's a drug and it's no longer an herb in a whole form yeah mm -hmm. so the herbs that we talk about yeah. are food whole yeah. food and if you're buying herbs you want the dried whole food herb um, or fresh mm -hmm. and I usually say local find a farmer or I do always recommend certain places like Mountain Rose Herb for mm -hmm. dried I like Star West Botanicals you want to have a reputable place to get your herbs um, yeah. and the things to be wary of are the encapsulated herbs mm -hmm. because like, I'll make capsules for people, but if they're getting a capsule of black walnut, there's nothing in there but black walnut, dried black walnut powder. And I'll get my dried black walnut from um, Mountain Rose Herb. But if you, st like, you know, if you hear or you read on the internet or someone says, oh, well, you know, let's just say cranberry. Because we can call cranberry an herb if we're using it in an herbal medicinal way. You know, oh, cranberry is good for urinary tract infections. Well, if you go to, let's say you're at like a big chain store and you go in the the uh, pharmacy aisle and buy um, some cranberry capsules, well, turn it over and look and see what is in there. Because mm -hmm. first of all, they're not going to have everything listed. And second of all, yeah. there's going to be a whole bunch of fillers. And mm -hmm. I wonder how much actual cranberry and is it no, organic? Yeah. It, you know, where did it come from? So yeah. um, I think... I'm saying an opinion here, but I think a lot of the complications people have are getting things that are um, not just, the, you know, they're shopping poorly, poor mm -hmm. choices in, in where they're getting their herbs. And yeah. uh, I don't think that means now we have to regulate it, <laughs> you know, because some people do go there like, oh, well, we have to regulate all of this so that it's all the same because that there's an art to herbal medicine mm -hmm. and we're not making it a science and we're not making it um, a drug. I shouldn't say we're not making a science. There's science to it, but we're not making it a drug. It's like we are in a way cooking. <laughs> um, and the traditional medicines made by these Indian indigenous cultures, they were cooking. They, had, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot. They weren't really making a lot of tinctures, or they weren't using their capsule maker. <laughs> they were getting out a pot. <laughs> they were boiling water and making strong medicine, strong drinks that people were drinking. Mm -hmm. And um, and they were making strong, strong, much stronger than what we we, we use when we make a cup of tea. So where do I want to go from here? Um, back to the topic, herb taking herbs safely. So I think it's really important to build your own library. I think it's really important to have a network of people who have experience with herbs. And that used to be our mothers and grandmothers and aunts, um, like, if yeah. we were in a cultural community, like, every, and in other countries, let's say in Poland or um, even in Europe, people still turn to those herbal remedies. I think someone told me, like, the queen in England, she has, she has her doctors, but she has her herbal, herbal people too. So in other countries, herbs are more accepted and people turn to them for very, you know, stomach aches or um, indigestion, um, 
the one class I had was on the Indian spices. And it's so intertwined with their cuisine, mm -hmm. but you're getting so much benefit from the herbs. Um, and so you could have, like, if you think of it this way, like, someone might be scared to take a tincture, like a prepared bottle of turmeric or a, a capsule of turmeric. Like, I don't know, you know, if they go and look and see what warnings there might be. But wouldn't you eat an Indian dish prepared with fresh turmeric or fresh ginger? Um, I know ginger. I, w I want to see if it's if it's even in here. I know I, I see warnings for ginger all the it's, time. Yeah, it can. If you have too much, I know it, it can. Well, you know, whatever you take anything for, it can always have the opposite effect. Like cough syrup can cause coughing. Well, yeah, that's because it tastes terrible. You don't want to swallow it. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, I know I've seen warnings on different ginger. Different people are actually cleansing reactions mm -hmm. versus... Um, it's like poisonous or, or mm -hmm. something like that. So I don't, I'm not speaking to your situation specifically, but what I wanted to bring to attention to everybody who's watching and you guys is that in Dr. Christopher's School of Natural Healing book, in the back, um, towards the very end of the book, he lists all of the categories of what an herb would fall under. So you have your alteratives, you have your analgesics, uh, you have antacids, you have anthelmintics, which expel worms. So I had someone ask me about an herb I gave her and her son was sweating then and she was concerned well that herb promotes sweating and it was cleansing his body he mm -hmm. had some viral you know lingering viral thing going on and it was doing what it was supposed to do it was cleansing it brought on a sweat and you mentioned the ayahuasca a lot of the the plants in the jungle and the preparations yeah. that they make <laughs> will can make you seem sick mm -hmm. but you're going to this like next i mean and if if you follow dr christopher's uh incurables thing exactly and yeah. you're doing all all of that those steps and drinking mm -hmm. the tea and doing the the catnip enema and when i first started cleansing and i did his incurables and i'm drinking the prune juice and i'm doing mm -hmm. the cayenne pepper shots it was like i was sick yeah, it was like worse I had before the, you get better. <laughs> it was like you are I had cleansing. the flu. Yeah, but mm -hmm. every time I went through one of those cleanses, like I would make mm -hmm. marked improvements. Like I used to have so many chronic things that my body went went through and cleansed through. So I think I think the first place to go is to look at what your herb is and what its actions are because sometimes it falls in that action. Um, and again, like, okay, moving your bowels. Mm -hmm. um, those are laxatives. So you have your mild laxatives or your stronger ones. I think, why do I wanna say Carm, yeah, carminatives. Um, those are a little bit, have less strength. So I'll just name a few. Expel gas. Um, excites intestinal peristalsis. So, you know, sometimes I've had people like they were scared, like, you know, they had a, you know to go to the bathroom more you know but that's what the herb is doing do. um and so herbs such as cumin dill fennel chamomile even garlic so many herbs that are like um in your garden uh wild carrot now i'll name some that are not necessarily what well, wormwood people do put in their garden yarrow even mm -hmm. um 
red rose, rosemary, all of these have this carminative digestive kind of aid. And then you have, if I go back to um, the laxatives, now these are much stronger and so you definitely are going to see stuff happening. And when you um, use a laxative, you're not only pulling toxins from your bowels, they might move and shift from other places. Um, when I was doing cleanses early on, I did have rashes kind of break out in places. So I took the belief from what I was reading and learning that this is part of the process mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to just, you know, maybe sometimes take a little break, but I'm trusting that my body is going through the process. So some of those laxatives are borage, cascara sagrada, chicory, dandelion, European rhubarb, fennel, figs, figs for sure. Figs yeah. are great. Yeah. Um, olive oil, oats, mustard, licorice, horseradish, raspberries, strawberry, spinach. Um, so this is just a story. <laughs> and then maybe we'll do some more sharing. When I was young, um, I, if, okay, I know now looking back <laughs> that I suffered from constipation. Um, I, my, we ate well, but we did eat a lot of white flour, um, you know, pasteurized milk. I, I would say I had a heavy starch-based diet, not, I wouldn't say a heavy vegetable-based, fiber-based diet. We did have home-cooked meals, so mom, if you watch this, I'm not picking on, on you, but um, not <laughs> enough fiber. So when I would eat a lot of strawberries, and we had a mulberry tree, I would eat tons and tons of mulberries sometimes i threw up and sometimes i went to the bathroom a lot and my mom thought i shouldn't eat these berries like it was too much like she didn't want me to have too many strawberries or too many mulberries but what i now know is that my body needed to cleanse like mm -hmm. i was constipated and when i got a you know a bowl full of strawberries it did its thing. Now, today, I can eat a huge bowl of strawberries, a huge bowl of mulberries, and I'm not going to have that. I'll probably go to the bathroom maybe three times that day, for sure, but I'm not going to be sick. Um, so, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I think native peoples look like now I really only use like coconut sugar and um, raw sugar because sugar actually, mainstream sugar is yeah. vegan because they filter it through and charred animal bones. But um, so now I actually just saw a, a naturopathic doctor up in Bloomsburg and I'm waiting for them to call me back for my second appointment. But um, I just went through a liver cleanse it was one of the things she has that they have up at bloom naturally mm -hmm. um, i don't think she actually goes somewhere and puts everything in the capsules but um that's what she did and i did the the betonite the liquid betonite okay. um, clay uh and nothing really extraordinary happened and i just finished that up like maybe a week and a half ago mm -hmm. like it was about five weeks and okay. uh so, and, and nothing really ever happened with doing the, the candida support I, I did and, and stuff. I, so I don't know, but I do mm. know <laughs> my neurologist, endocrinologist, rheumatologist, new eye doctor, my geneticist and cardiologist all said, they think I pretty much fixed myself by getting rid of mainstream things and basically mm -hmm. like eating fresh whole foods yeah and so but they still you know they're very amazed that 
the herbs and stuff are supporting this stuff and I've corrected a lot of stuff. I'm missing a few, I'm missing an adrenal gland, part of my parathyroid gland because of tumors and stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna just press on. so I don't I don't, I don't and mm -hmm. all laid out for you. So she gives you step by step, and it's really easy to understand. There's nothing, you know, like like where is she coming from. It's like very um, easy to understand in reading, mm -hmm. and I just really enjoy her books. And um, let's see, the lead the Thomas. She's one mm -hmm. that um, I really like. She's the one that was one of the first herb books that I learned about um, and this hers is 10 essential herbs and she also has a lot of different you know recipes concoctions that you can make up that um, okay. have really helped and to understand the different herbs mm -hmm. um, Dr. Um, She's also under um, Dr. Christopher, Dr. Mom. Dr. Mom, yeah. Yeah, she's got a really good pregnancy. Su Susan, book. is her name Susan? I think it is. Susan, I, I can't remember her last name, but she has also her Ellis. own line of herbs. D Susan Ellis, Spriggs. maybe. Yeah, I think so. The Spriggs is her line of herbs, mm -hmm. and I also get hers, um, her Nature's Warehouse. That's a company that you can get her line from at a very good price. Okay. Tinctures and salves and different mm -hmm. herbs that... Um, yeah. I use a lot of so those are the few I can think of off right off hand okay and I'm enjoying the Mary Gladstar book that you um, had mentioned to get I got that one I've, I've been enjoying that book too mm. so I think there's an old very start recipe I found that yeah. I really liked so uh, that's why I was interested in what you had to say for her so there's one thing that you do um, I, I love Jake Ducey and I follow him. I followed him for years. And he has a program called Second Mind. I did see that last time. And I, it's expensive. And I, I don't know if you need to do that. Buy it. But let's say you make a list of 20 things. And so what you want to do is you you start with your list and you're, you're writing things you're grateful for that have happened and or something you love. That you already have that a feeling associated. Like yesterday was a glorious sunny day and I just I enjoyed sitting outside okay so then you also say um, when we went to when we went to Maine last year I just oh my gosh the beach was just so gorgeous so you put like two or three things that you've already done that give you that uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. Then you slip in there something that hasn't been, that has not manifested yet, but is out there. So you can, I use maybe different terminology than um, a, a Christian, but faith is the substance of, how does that go? Faith is the substance of things not seen. seen. It's a little bit longer than that. But faith is the substance of things not seen, the evidence of things. <laughs> I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, about, faith. You know, your faith one. is it's made of things that are unseen. There's no evidence yet. So it's the same principle, but I, I think of the law of attraction. So it's all there. It all exists. The, co the complete wellness, the complete health. So, so now I said a couple things like that bowl of raspberries I ate for breakfast today was glorious. It just was a perfect way to start my day. Um, and then you're like, the, the health I'm enjoying now is like better than I've ever had in my entire life. Like I have so much energy. I can do everything I want. Okay, do you have that? Maybe not, but you're gonna go on. Now, now you go back to two more things that um, you've already done. So it was the best day of my life when my son was born. You know, I had a great birth. It was just so amazing. It filled me with so much joy. And then you say, I'm just so happy and grateful. I'm living in the house of my dreams. Like we finally bought the property that I've always wanted. Is that true? No, it might not be yet. But so you make your list and you, and whatever goals, your health goals, um, whatever you want to see in your life, and even for me, what I started doing is practicing because I don't eat dairy and I don't eat wheat. And I, I know it was a, a breakdown in my body. 
probably before birth, but definitely in my life of um, stress, major stress. I've always had stress. My, you know, we wor worry and fear, inherited inherited worry and fear. Your body should be able to digest those foods. So I slip in there. The spaghetti I had was, you know, so delicious. Mm -hmm. You know, the bowl of spaghetti because maybe maybe I'll eat that again. Maybe I won't. I'm not, you know, dwelling on it. But I do believe that you can reprogram your body, your cells, your mind. It's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And just like if you tell yourself, you know, I can't eat um, or I'm not taking those herbs. They're, you know, poisonous. Well, your body's going to believe that, you know. Mm -hmm. So herb safety and taking herbs safely really... I think a lot of it comes to your belief system. It comes down to your belief system. <laughs> and it's very spiritual yeah. too, because you know, you you say, well, herbs don't do anything. So a person can say that you know, I tried herbs or the natural way, or they yeah. just didn't do anything. But it's it's so much more than just the things we eat. It's also very spiritual. You know, like you said, you can't be harboring fear in your life. Yeah. I'm my mom. She, you know, we did everything perfect. I mean, she was doing all kinds of help and nothing, nothing helped, okay? But because until she realized she was harboring all this fear inside of her, mm -hmm. you know, our bodies weren't meant to ha harbor stuff like that. They, yeah. they will not get better, you know? So if you are dealing with something spiritual that, you know, maybe you don't know, maybe you need to, you know, find, you know, it, what that is, or maybe not. I'm just saying that it takes more than just food to walk, you know, to be healthy, to have, yeah. you know, to have, have the herbs worked. And, um, yeah, the spiritual, the spiritual aspect is also a very important part of it that we need to also take in consideration that has a lot to do with it. I mean, herbs or for health sure. or just our health walk. I think for, for years, I felt like the herbs were like um, keeping me on the hamster wheel. Like, I had so much fear and so many bad thoughts that they were like, keeping me from going backwards but I wasn't going forwards like yeah. I was just like spinning but it was like sustaining me in this place like I'm not getting worse but I'm not getting better and yeah. I was like so grateful for them because I don't if I didn't have them I would have been worse right. but what I began doing in my healing was looking at the spiritual things the emotions and like yeah. my thoughts what am I saying what am I believing and like really wanting to be delivered of all my fears and Every time I went through something then and faced a fear or a, a mindset that wasn't serving me, I saw improvement in my yeah. health. So um, the, that, this is probably the last thing I'll say and then stop for tonight. That to me is the most rewarding aspect of the natural journey. It's not an easy one. But to really get to know yourself and this, like who you are spiritually, why we are here and facing mm -hmm. those things, I think can, I don't want to say can only be done with a natural plan, but there's something that happens when you go through the, that naturally versus, so let's say you have some kind of symptom and and you just go and get a drug for it and it covers it up, well, you go about your merry way. Mm -hmm. But if you have a symptom that is just persist, like eczema even, like mm -hmm. I had that, what the heck is going on? And I wouldn't, I didn't wanna just put some steroid cream on. So I had to read and research and look into like the fears that, you know, the stress and the fears and like, I really like, wanted to know like what is going on inside of me that this keeps manifesting outside of me mm -hmm. and that I think is the really cool part of herbal medicine herbal that that nature walk that people miss by mm -hmm. taking a pill and suppressing symptoms yeah um, so why are you know what is what what is the purpose of your life um, to live as long as you can um you know this is not our forever body and our forever home and it's to me it's 
about doing something with your life and helping others. It's not about, oh, how long can I live and how safe can I make myself, you know? Yeah. It's what can I do for others? Why am I here? And, you know, Jesus wasn't here that long. But what did he do for the world? <laughs> you know, it's a, it's scary to think, like, well, if I put myself out there, if I, you know, if I really live my purpose, someone might come, you know, people might not like it. I might not be safe. But I think, like, we are here for a spiritual reason. It's not mm -hmm. to keep our flesh safe. Yeah. So before I stop, any any last words? <laughs> Well, my husband always liked to say when he would go along, you know, he's, I have a, a terrible foot injury and um, it's pretty well fixed, three foot reconstructions. To get to that second surgery, he told the doctor, he said, you're just basically telling her to take an aspirin for the rock in her shoe. <laughs> he said, you're not getting to the yeah, root yeah. cause. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I consider for me, all the supplementation, it's you know, kind of like a stop yeah. in getting to the root cause and supporting you on that journey. Yeah, that definitely. Sense. That's yeah. a, a great analogy. It's like taking aspirin for a rock in your shoe. Yeah. Well, you'll find yeah. Dr. Ava says um, putting a plaster on your heel for the blister or something. She says okay. something very similar, yeah. and, it, and it shocked me that she said that. <laughs> and what about you, Melinda? Well, Dr. Christopher, the same. You know, he teaches that you're not finding the the reason you have that it's like your body is giving you these signals you know like we're taught in the medical world you know just go cut out your um what do you call it? Thyroid? Thyroid? You, no your tonsils, tonsils. Yeah. and it's like oh, i had mine cut out i'm just yeah, like mine are done. <laughs> cut it out. it's yep. like our body you know, our maker our creator put that in there to yep. tell us if it's acting up something's wrong yeah. we need to do something that's our signal say hey um something's happening you need to do something now or it's gonna be a bigger problem later and that's yeah. what you know the medical system does it just covers it up or cuts mm -hmm. it out it's like no we weren't made yeah. that way you know our body is saying no it's your tonsils are hurting you because of this you need to do this that and that but you know we're not taught that anymore mm -hmm. you know with the medical world because you know like you said they don't aren't taught nutrition how yeah. the body works yeah so, even with you know an adrenal gland is like this big and the tumor on top of it i said can't you just peel the tumor off and keep my adrenal gland and i told them mm -hmm. i said things aren't gonna go well for yeah. me i know this up and up you'll be fine and then that was 2016 and now it's like a yeah. up and down and i'm just like can i can, do you still have that can I put it back <laughs> yeah it's like you know because i don't you know, I don't want to be on these supplements for forever. I And I always tell people I'm on an ever-evolving treatment plan, you know, for my life. And mm -hmm. it's because if something's not working, then we need to take a step back and look at what, mm -hmm. what we've been doing and reevaluate. And yeah. a lot of doctors won't do it. Like I said before, like, you have this new symptom? Here, just add this pill to the, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to CBS or wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. And you keep having more pills added mm -hmm. to that for those symptoms. Yep. And it's just Here's a pill going. to take a pill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually people do, who are taking a lot of pills, they get fed up. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. I don't want to be on all these pills. And mm -hmm. then... It can be very confusing. It's yeah. very, very hard, though, to go from that place and go backwards to reset. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm speaking, or I feel like when I teach... I'm talking preventatively, you know, at s sometimes you've gone too far and you need medical intervention for yeah. sure. Right. And my... Yeah, they do have a know, place. <laughs> I have family who had, you know, surgery and mm -hmm. medical intervention and sometimes you need to, to like, okay, now we're, let's, let's look at what's <clears throat> happening now, but if they didn't get that surgery, they... They would have died or they mm -hmm. wouldn't have been very ill or, or incapacitated so i don't ever want to say it's a bad thing right there's definitely but, that aspect i was thinking of children I have, a, I have a friend who just took her child to the doctor and just automatically removed him you know and it's just like you know they didn't have a problem but you know they were just taught that you know we just yeah. automatically move tonsils at this age or whatever so yeah. we don't have it's like no you know it's like please don't do that to your child and mm -hmm. you know it's there for a purpose we are wonderfully, you know, 
created by our, our creator and he knew what he was doing you know? yeah no <laughs> i had mine out when i was in my 20s and i now know what was the problem mm -hmm. and yeah. what i could have done i needed to cleanse majorly right my lymphatic yeah. system was mm -hmm. so clogged i was eating poorly horrible <laughs> And it took, I know when I started cleansing, that was what I was cleansing. All this congestion from when my tonsils were flared up. Now, when they, they cut them out, I thought everything was good because now I no longer had sore throat. I didn't have that tonsil mm -hmm. congestion, but I still had it throughout my body and it was coming out in other ways. And so, yeah, that's a project. If you get yourself to that point where you are told you need to have your tonsils removed, you have a project, <laughs> unless you want to get them cut out. <laughs> yeah. But if you do, you're missing a huge part of your immune system. And mm -hmm. I definitely think it affects my ability to fight um, things. Mm -hmm. But I overcompensate, and the body can. The body is amazing. It can mm -hmm. overcompen mm -hmm. It can compensate in other ways. And um, eat a lot of garlic. <laughs> So, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> Thanks.